Shopping in Provo, baby. Wow! <laughs> This is my first time here, man. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you. You have not made it. <laughs> Till you get to Provo, just. <laughs> I'm just, y'all are popular with the bros. <laughs> What's up, dog? I'm, I'm so glad to see you. Where you been the whole time I've been here? Y'all need to open up a Popeye's chicken or something. <laughs> I'm excited, I'm excited. <laughs> I am, man. I was raised old school, man. I love old school. I love old school. How many of y'all was raised old school? Clap your hands if you was raised old school. You are my people. I love old school. Kids nowadays need to be raised old school. You understand me? Kids nowadays are so blessed. You hear me? They are so blessed. I'm just, I know kids nowadays going on cruises. We couldn't afford no cruise when I was coming up. You understand me? We was broke. How many of y'all went on a cruise when you was a child? Clap your hands if you went on a cruise when you were, I hate you. You had money. <laughs> Clap your hands if you did not go on a cruise when you was a child. Clap your hands. You are my people, baby. You understand me? We couldn't afford a cruise. The closest we came to getting a cruise is watching Gilligan's Island. That was it, guys. I'm trying to tell you, man, just kids getting all in the jacuzzis. Our jacuzzis was farting in the tub. That's all we had. Kids are blessed nowadays, and they are soft. I'm telling you, kids are soft nowadays. Back in the day, we was hard, baby. We came up hard. Why? Because our parents beat the brakes off of us. You understand me? How many of y'all got beat when you was growing up? Clap your hands if you got beat. We got beat when we was growing up. We ain't shut up no schools. We didn't touch no guns that was in the house. We didn't go in the living room because it was for grown folks only. You understand me? Those kids are so soft nowadays, they got to wear helmets and elbow pads and knee pads just to ride a bike. Come on, man. We would ride butt naked. <laughs> he was hard. Skinny and knees up, that was all part of learning how to ride the bike. You understand? Next time the bike started to fall over, you remember that skinny, you were smart enough to do what? Jump off of it quick before it hit the ground, man. Just kids nowadays keep running in the trucks and trees. They dumb, I'm trying to tell you. They got the helmet on. When I was coming up, if you wore a helmet, that meant you rode the short bus to school. You had a... Kids don't even want to go outside and play nowadays. Back in the day, we would go outside and play all day. You understand me? My son, he's 19 years old now, right? But when he was about 9, 10 years old, right? We're living in Atlanta. Summertime, it's a beautiful day outside. And I go to his room. This, this is all I see. Just... I'm like, son, why don't you go outside and play? He's like, mm-mm. Too hot. I unplugged this game. I made him go outside. I said, get outside right now. Get outside. Right now. Yeah. Made him go outside. He outside about 10 minutes. He come back in the house. I'm like, whoo. It's hot. I said, you was only out there 10 minutes. He like, whoo, I, I need some water. I said, man, get some water out the sink. He said, Dad, I can't have water out the sink. Water out the sink got too much bacteria in it. My system can't handle that. I need bottled water, Daddy. That's what I need, bottled water. I made him go back outside thirsty. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Because back in the day, we didn't come in the house to get water. What did we do? We went to the water holes. You understand me? Turn it on. Come on. We drank a lot of dirt, but it made us healthy. Kids are not afraid of their parents nowadays. How many of y'all were scared of your parents growing up? Clap your hands if you were scared of your parents. Remember, your mama could call you a certain way. You start praying right there. Remember that? You'd be outside with your friends. She's like, get over here. You'd be like, oh God, kill her right now. Let her arms fall off so she can't hurt hit me. <laughs> Please help me, right? She's like, get over here. You're like, mama, I promise I won't do it no more. I promise, right? You start asking your friends what I do, what I do, what I do. 
They're like, I don't know, but your mama mad. I gotta go. Bye. She's like, get over here. You're like, oh, mama, the closer you got, the louder you got, because you wanted somebody to hear you and help you. Like, mama, I won't lie. She's like, shut up for somebody to think I'm killing you, and I'm going to kill you. Your parents will beat you. Your grandparents will beat you. The whole family take turns beating you, right? And you didn't want Big Mama to come over to beat you. You know, Big Mama, Grandma, Nana, Grandmother, Abuela, whatever you called her. You didn't want her to come over to beat you because she could really beat you. Because she had that extra fat on her arm right here. She'd bring that fat arm around. She held your head in between her legs. She had them old time stockers on that was rolled up. Just had the big knot on the inside right there. You know what I mean? She smelled like vinegar. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Did I go too far with the vinegar? Did I go too far? Y'all would stop laughing and everything. Uh-uh, no. Kids are blessed now, man. Just kids talking back now. We couldn't talk back. Could y'all talk back? No. Y'all didn't hear me ask the question. I said, could y'all talk back? No. We weren't allowed to have an opinion until we was 21. <laughs> I ain't even talked back one time. My father said, hey, hey, get up. Get the trash out like I told you to. I ain't even talked back. I'm just like, ah. He's like, what is you breathing hard for? When I tell you to do something, huh? You want to breathe, huh? You want to breathe, huh? He hit me so hard, air flew from my mouth and butt at the same time. <laughs> breathe again, just pop on us. <laughs> Kids are blessed, even mothers are different. All the mothers, clap your hands. Mothers, clap your hands, clap your hands. Mm -hmm. Great mothers. Clap your hands again, mothers, if you ask your kids what they want to eat for dinner. Go ahead, clap your hands. You're soft, all of y'all soft. Back in the day, our mothers didn't ask us what we want to eat. You understand me? Right? We couldn't come in the house like, Mama, I would like to have this, and I would like to have a little bit of that, and could I have... She's like, what do I look like? A restaurant, a menu? You eat whatever I cook. You're like, but Mama, I don't want that. You don't want what I cook? You don't want what I cook? Go on to bed. Go on to bed, right? So you're going to be stubborn. You're going to go to bed, right? So you wake up the next morning, you're so hungry, your stomach touch your spine. You understand me? <laughs> you smell the breakfast cooking with the eggs and the bacon and the toast, right? And you come downstairs like, Good morning, Mom. She's like, good morning, baby. Did you sleep well? Yes, ma'am. You hungry? Yes, ma'am. Go on, sit down at the table, right? You sit down there at the table, right? She, you know what I'm talking about? She bring that same plate of food up last night. <laughs> you ain't gonna waste no food around here. I'm trying to tell you, man. Just kids are blessed. I'm trying to. You know, even schools are different nowadays. They're taking stuff out of school. We used to love back in the day. Y'all remember dodgeball? <laughs> Do you remember dodgeball, baby? Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, what was the best part about dodgeball? Taking somebody's head off. <laughs> if you got hit in the head with the ball, what'd you learn how to do next time? <laughs> Duck is called life. Sometimes it hurts, you understand me? They still got dodgeball, but they use a phone ball. That ain't no dodgeball, that is phone ball. You get hit in the head with a phone ball, don't nothing happen, you understand me? Dodgeball is that red rubber ball, you hear me? You remember that red rubber ball, baby? Come on, man. Trying to tell you, put Wilson across somebody's forehead, that was extra points. <laughs> Trying to tell you, man, just, my son came home from school. He about eight, seven, you know, eight, nine years old. He came home from school seething. He was so mad. He was on the verge of tears. And my son never cried. I'm trying to tell you, he was not a crier. Even as a baby, he wasn't a crier. Me and his mother, when he was a little baby, we used to have to pinch him to make him cry. He wouldn't cry. It wouldn't make no noise, right? But we had him in, you know, I had him playing football. He's seven years old. He's the littlest, littlest kid on the team, right? His pads was, I put his pads on him. He was so little. I'm like... I don't know, little man. I don't know. I'm trying to tell you, I'm telling you, he was so little, his knee pads was around his shin. Do you understand me, right? So I'm like, I don't know, right? So he went to practice, but I couldn't go because I had to come out and go to work. So I called, I asked his mother. I'm like, how did he do? How did he do? She's like, oh, he took to it like a duck to water. I'm like, really, right? I couldn't wait to get home when I got home, right? And I saw my little boy, right? And we took him to practice, and he's in the pads, and I saw my little boy, right? He the littlest kid on the team, and I saw him hit when I saw him him hit, I'm like, oh, we gonna be rich. Yes! 
Yes, right? Never cried. So when he came home from school on the verge of tears, I knew something was wrong. He like, mm, mm, mm. I said, what's wrong, man? What you crying for? What's, what's wrong? What you bringing so hard for? Huh? What's wrong? He like, this little boy, daddy. This little boy, daddy. He keep picking on me all the time, daddy. He pick on me all the time. I said, did you tell the teacher? I told the teacher, daddy. I said, what the teacher said? The teacher didn't do nothing, daddy. She didn't do nothing. I said, son, you need to handle that little boy. <laughs> Right? He's like, I can't. I'm like, what you mean you can't? He's like, there's a zero tolerance for fighting in school. Yeah. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> he said, there's a zero tolerance for fighting in school. I'm like, but son, you told the teacher. The teacher didn't do anything. What you supposed to do? He says, daddy, there's a zero tolerance. <laughs> I said, son, what if the little boy is not following the zero tolerance rule, son? Come up to you. Pow! Hitch in your face. Tell daddy what you're gonna do about it. He says, Daddy, there's a zero tolerance. I said, Let me tell you something, son. The school has its rules, and daddy has his rules. You understand me? And daddy's rules beat school rules every time. You hear me? I said, Let me tell you something. Don't you start nothing with nobody at that school. You hear me? But the minute somebody put their hands on you, son, you go straight to work. You understand me? Beat the brakes off of them. That's what you do. You understand me? And don't worry about it. I'm going to come up to the school and I'm going to talk to the principal and I'm going to have your back. And I'm going to tell the principal, I told my son not to start nothing with nobody in this school. But if anybody put their hands on him, for him to go straight to work. Now what he taught that kid is not to bother him. He'll bother everybody else in this school, but he won't be bothering him. And I know my son is suspended and while he's suspended, I'm taking him to Six Flags. Come on, son. Let's go. They bless, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm doing what I truly, truly love to do. I am. I'm doing what I truly love to do. I prayed at least three years. I prayed at least three years that God would show me something. I would love to do so much that I would do it for free every day. <laughs> That's legal because you got to be specific when you pray. <laughs> My, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri originally, right? And my, my cousin came to me. He like, man, you're funny. You should try to be a comedian. Took me to this comedy club in St. Louis, Missouri, right? We went on amateur night. We watched the amateurs. I'm like, I know I'm funnier than they are, right? And a couple weeks later, I was up doing my thing, baby. That was over 30 years ago. I'm so truly blessed. I give God all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Been a lot of places because of my job. Been to a lot of places. You know what I'm talking about? Been to my, uh, with this one island. A lot of islands, actually, because I work on cruise ships a lot. So I've been to this one, the, my first island, man, that they flew me to that was out of the country. Even before I started doing cruise ships, they flew me to this island. And I had never seen water this blue before. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I did, but I'm from the hood. You know what I mean? And <laughs> it was in the toilet. You know what I'm talking about? And <laughs> Grand Cayman Islands, beautiful place. Anybody in here ever been there before? Clap your hands. Beautiful place. Rest of y'all need to get out of, you know, Provo sometime. Do you understand me? But, but I went, man, and I did. I got a chance to do some things over there. Never thought I would ever get a chance to do right. Got a chance to go scuba diving. Went scuba diving. Found out black people don't do that. We really don't. Uh -uh. We don't. Brother, you been scuba diving? Told you. You got to go too far out into the ocean to scuba dive. We ain't going out that far. There's too much stuff out there that can eat you. You understand me? Red dark meat with tender. We ain't going out there. Here to <laughs> Even the black people who lived on the island didn't scuba dive. They saw me going. They're like, no, mine don't you go. <laughs> the blacks, they go out there, never come back. Stay with us, man. Come, come. Right? <laughs> So they took me out, right? I'm going out on a boat, on the way out to the dive site. Get to the dive site. Guess who have to jump off the boat first? I didn't appreciate this. I'm the only black person on the boat, so quite naturally, I'm thinking, how come the black man got to go first? Huh? <laughs> I wasn't the first one on the boat. How come I got to be the first one off, huh? What am I bait? I'm not going first, right? They got mad. They were like, jump, jump. I'm like, I can't. Help me, please, right? I seen Jaws, right? Finally, they pushed me off the boat into the water. I'm just going down, right? And they put weights on you to take you down. I think they doubled up on my weights because I'm going down like a big rock, just like, right? And the fish were scared of me because they ain't never seen a black man before. They thought some big whale was pooping on them. You know what I'm saying? And I had a yellow cap on, looked like a piece of corn was in it. You know what I'm talking about? 
When I'm going down, I'm 40, 50 feet down, water started to seep down inside my mask. Now the instructor taught us how to clear the mask back on the boat, but you know, I really wasn't paying attention. Cause <laughs> He's like, okay, people, listen up, listen up. Okay, if water is to get down inside your mask, never, ever panic. Well, I failed that part, right? <laughs> he says, just take a deep breath in through your mouth. That's through your regulator. That's what you're going to be using to breathe with. Hold your head back. Hold the top of your mask. Breathe out through your nose. There will be water displacement. Water will be dispersed right out of the bottom of your mask. I forgot all of that. You hear me? You don't remember none of that when you're drowning. You hear me? <laughs> I went straight to the panic. I got the breathing wrong. I didn't hold my head back, nothing. I'm <laughs> By the time I got back to the top, snot all up in my mouth. I had a mask full of snot. You hear me? You, you know you got a lot of snot when a person helping you back on the boat. Tell about here, let me get you off. Oh, mm -mm -mm. Grab that, get that, get that. Look like two, three jellyfish on this man's face. I'm trying to tell you. I always honor my parents. I, because of my parents, I'm here. I honor them both. I lost both of my parents. I honor them both at all of my shows by doing the hug sign, man, and salute. You know what I mean? I am hugging my beautiful mother. Lost my beautiful mother August 23rd, 2007 from cancer. Missed my mother's hug. She had the hugs that would erase every problem. I'm hugging my beautiful mother. You know what I mean? I am salute my dad. Lost my father Christmas Eve 2012. He was a veteran in the Army, man. He fought in the Korean War. He fought for the United States of America. I salute him and every veteran that's in the house. Y'all make some noise for the veterans in here, baby. Give it up one time. Yes, man, so my parents was married for 50 years. 50 years they were married, man. It's a beautiful thing. I'm married, I love being married. My wife is Puerto Rican, pray for me. <laughs> Whatever you heard about Puerto Rican women, believe it. I'm trying to tell you now. I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm trying to, as I came from Atlanta down to Miami. Now, Puerto Ricans and black people, we do the same thing. We just do things on a different level. Black people love our family. We do. But everybody in our family can't live with us. You understand me? <laughs> Puerto Ricans, I went down. It was 3,000 people in the house. I'm like, oh, my God. When I walked in, all I heard was, gotta, 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 I'm like, what is going on? What are they saying? Da -da 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 Negro. Now I know they're talking about me right there. You understand? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, and every male in the family is called Poppy. That's what they call every male in the family. Her father, Poppy Uno. Her brother, Poppy Dose. Her son, Poppy Trace. Me, Poppy Negro. I can't get no, no. <laughs> to tell you, man. And they are not lazy. They will work hard. I'm trying to tell you, they don't call anybody for anything. They fix it all themselves. I made the mistake of calling a roofer. My mother-in-law's at the house. You understand me? I'm like, yeah, man, I got a leak in the southwest part of my roof. I need y'all to come out and take a look at it. She's like, yeah? <laughs> no, 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 hang on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, mama. I'm hang on the phone. I'm like, mommy, hang on the phone. I'm like, mommy. She goes, negro. I'm like, mommy, you got one more time. You understand me? I'm like, man, I call you back, right? I, I hang up the phone, right? Next thing I know, my mother-in-law is on a ladder on the roof. You understand me? When she get up there, all I hear is. Got off the roof, did a tune up on the car, washed the car, armor all the wheels. I'm trying to tell you, came in the house, cooked the dinner. She did all of this in 15 minutes, baby. That lady good. How many people out here married? Clap your hands if you're married. If you're married 20 years, clap your hands, married 20 years. 30 years, clap your hands, 30 years. 40 years, 40 years. Okay. 30 years, 30 years again, 30 years. Right here, right here, right there. 30 years, man, God bless you. 39, God bless you, sir. What's your name, sir? Gary. Gary, and this your wife here, sir? What's your name? Sandy. Sandy, Gary and Sandy. 39, you look good, Sandy, you're doing well. <laughs> Gary, you need to take better care of yourself. <laughs> Just kidding. You remember the first time? You remember the first time you took Sandy out, Gary? You remember the first time? Where'd you go? Canyon. Up a canyon. <laughs> what was you doing up that canyon? <laughs> you like, that's why we married. <laughs> <laughs> so up on canyon, I bet you was on your best behavior, huh, Gary? 
I know you had on some clean drawers and everything, didn't you? Uh, I know 39 years later, you probably don't care now, do you? Do you, right? I know you don't even pick his drawers up with your hands, do you, Sandy? Uh, you be like, come here, Gary, come here. Look at this, man, look at this, Gary. You got to do better than what you're doing, you understand me? Everybody's on that best behavior on that first day. They are on that best. They're on that best behavior on that first day, right? You take your woman out to eat on the first day. She won't eat nothing. You understand me? Like, baby, go ahead, knock yourself out, get whatever you want. She's like, mm-mm, I don't want anything to eat. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> like, did you eat earlier? I told you we was going out to eat. Did you eat earlier? No, no, I don't eat much. I eat like a bird. They don't tell you it's a buzzard. You understand me? <laughs> You like, baby, this is a buffet. You can go back many times as you want. Mm-mm. I, ha I had a carrot last Christmas. I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> so you don't like Mexican food, but your girl like Mexican food. So you're going to take a, you know, get some Mexican food. You're going to tolerate it that night because you're trying to impress, right? So you take out to get some Mexican food, right? You get the refried beans. You get the black beans. You get the common chingas. You get the guacamole. You get the sour cream. You get the tacos. You get the quesadillas. You get the... You get all of that. You understand me? Then after you take your woman out to eat, right? You got to take your woman to the movies. So you take your woman to the movies, right? When you take your woman to the movies, you got to get your woman some popcorn. Now women like their popcorn layered with butter. You understand me? So you got to get some popcorn on the bottom. Put some butter on top of that. Some popcorn in the middle. Put some butter on top of that. Some popcorn on the top, baby, and put some butter on top of that. You understand me? You get yourself the nachos with the jalapeno cheese, cause you're still on the Mexican tip. You get both of y'all some diet cokes, cause you're trying to watch you wait. You understand me? <laughs> now, it's a good movie, right? It's a romantic movie, scary movie, whatever, but you're getting all close and cozy. Everything is going well, right? The movie's over, right? You're driving your woman home. You got your car waxed down. You got your wheels armor rolled all up. You got it smelling good on the inside, right? And you're talking to your girl. You're like, baby girl, I just want you to know that I really enjoyed myself with you tonight. You know what I'm saying? You're such a beautiful person inside and out, girl. And by that, I mean, you are so fine, but you know, you don't have that I know I'm fine attitude, girl, and that's what I really like about you. You know what I'm talking about? Then all of a sudden, all them nachos with the jalapeno cheese mixed with that Diet Coke starting to bubble up in your stomach. You know what I'm talking about? Gas is starting to build up. You're like, oh, not now. Please, please. Just <laughs> let me hold it till I get into the house. Please, right? But your stomach is going to... So you, you ain't going to be able to hold it, right? So you're going to try to sneak it out on it. That's what you're going to try to do. You're going to try to sneak it out on it. So you're going to crack your window a little bit. And you're going to lean this way so you can sneak it out. You understand me? You're going to lean this way, right? This is why the brothers lean when we drive. You understand me? <laughs> now, you don't want to drive too fast. You don't want to crack your window too much because if you do, it's going to boomerang and come right back in. You don't want it to boomerang on you, right? So you're getting it all out. Just you're getting it out. She don't know nothing. Just Right? You get it all out. You're like, oh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it, right? Then all of a sudden, all that Mexican food you ate, the refried beans and the black beans and the common chickens and the guacamole and the sour cream and the quesadillas and the tacos and the... All that hit you hard at one time. You're like, oh, no, no, no. You squeeze your butt cheeks together so hard, you pull the leather up off your seat. You understand me? And you know this one's going to be loud. This is going to be loud, right? So you turn your radio all the way up. You turn it all the way up. Just Maybe you can let it out to the beat of the music. You know what I'm saying? Just, white boy, just where you're screwed because you ain't got no rhythm. You know what I mean? And you're trying to hold it. Finally, you can't hold it no longer. You just be like, I'm so sorry, baby. She be going, I'm sorry, too. I'm so glad you did yours first. I couldn't hold mine no longer. We gonna be together 39 